Hey everyone, it's Corona from The Headphone Show. Now, recently I had the opportunity to spend some time with Odyssey's premium gaming headset, the Mobius, which I really enjoyed as a multimedia headphone because of its great multi-platform compatibility, its enjoyable tuning, and remarkably good technical performance for a gaming headset, even in its Bluetooth wireless mode. However, for gaming, which was its intended application, it felt just a bit flat for me. This isn't to say that I didn't appreciate the features that the Mobius offered, however, it ultimately left me wanting for a headset experience that was more focused and streamlined for the application of gaming. And that's where the Odyssey Penrose steps in. Let's check it out. The Penrose, which retails for $299, or roughly $100 less than the Mobius, is the most recent addition to Odyssey's lineup of gaming headsets. Now, at a glance, the Penrose may look a lot like the Mobius, and that's because it essentially is. After all, both headphones are utilizing the same chassis, and they both sport the same 100mm planar magnetic transducer with uh, Odyssey's phaser waveguide magnet technology. What's the difference between them? Well, let's find out together as we take a look at the Penrose and draw some comparisons to the Mobius. And let's start off by checking out its accessories. The Penrose comes packaged alongside a nice array of accessories, the first of which are three different cables. There is a USB-C to USB-A charging cable, a USB-C to USB-C charging cable, and a 3.5mm to 3.5mm aux cable for use with laptops, tablets, and other mobile devices. Then there is the USB dongle for 2.4GHz wireless, which is meant for use with game consoles, PCs, as well as macOS systems. Lastly, there is of course the Penrose's microphone, which is attachable via a 3.5mm port on the side of the headset, and it sounds like this. Alright, so what you're listening to now is a raw recording of the Penrose's microphone going straight into Premiere Pro. As you can hear, it's a little bit nasally, but it does have a, a, a decent amount of low end to help my voice sound a bit more natural. I will say though that it's a bit disappointing that it's nowhere near, uh, it doesn't have anywhere near the, the clarity that the Mobius's microphone had, and I think that it's because this one has quite a bit more compression and maybe because it's wireless. Nonetheless, it's perfectly serviceable for most applications like chatting and gaming online, Although I definitely wouldn't recommend using it as a primary broadcasting microphone. Alright, so now let's move on to build and comfort. As mentioned earlier, the Penrose's build is nearly identical to that of the Mobius, with the only difference being the Penrose's color scheme, which is black and blue for PlayStation 4 and 5, and black and green for Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. Like the Mobius though, the chassis on the Penrose feels robust despite f almost being entirely made of plastic and it remains lightweight at only 320 grams, which is actually 30 grams lighter than the Mobius. As for comfort, and this should come as no surprise, the Penrose is pretty similar to the Mobius, so my comments will remain fairly unchanged. The build is lightweight and shouldn't be fatiguing for most listeners, while the angle pads provide a good amount of room for the user's ears. One difference I did notice though, and this could be specific to the units I have with me, is that the Penrose has a slightly softer clamp force, which made them more comfortable to wear for me in prolonged listening sessions. I still wish the Penrose used a split headband pad design so that it more adequately distributed the weight and uh, pressure up top, but it's not really a big concern and all around I still found it to be a pretty comfortable wear. Now let's talk about features, and one of my criticisms of the Mobius was that it had maybe too many features, with some of them overlapping and making others redundant, such as the 7.1 surround sound versus 3D audio, whilst also making onboard controls feel cluttered. What Odyssey has done with the Penrose then is that they've stripped back some of the features that were not as relevant for gaming and have added new ones that make them more beneficial and easier to use for that application. Controls on the left ear cup have been greatly simplified, with most buttons and wheels no longer having more than two commands attached to them. On the rear side of the ear cup there are two volume wheels, with the top one controlling master volume and the second one controlling mic side tone volume as well as game chat mix adjustment for PlayStation and Xbox consoles. On the front side of the cup, the Mobius' 3D button has been replaced by a multi-function button on the Penrose that cycles through the different sources, so wireless Bluetooth and aux, and the wireless dongle pairing. Lastly, there is a mic mute toggle switch and the power button, which doubles up as a Bluetooth pairing button and a pause play button. 
Then there's what's undoubtedly the Penrose's primary feature, which is its 2.4 GHz wireless connection in addition to its Bluetooth support. This is a significant change from the Mobius, which relied solely on Bluetooth for usage in wireless mode. The Penrose's use of a 2.4 GHz band overcomes the latency issues that the Mobius had when using its Bluetooth mode, and now allows the Penrose to be suitable for usage even in online competitive games without the need for a wired connection. During my time with the Penrose, I had zero communication issues between the headset and the dongle, there were no audio dropouts, and no latency that I could sincerely notice. I should also note that the Penrose can play Bluetooth and wireless audio at the same time, which was not possible on the Mobius. So for example, you could play music from your phone while listening to game audio streamed from your PC or console. Lastly, for power, the Penrose has a pretty healthy 15 hour battery life, and it's Odyssey HQ enabled, which allows you to edit and save the headset's EQ when connected via USB to a PC or Mac, or on a mobile device. Okay, so now let's talk about sound. Despite coming in at a lower price point, I found that the Penrose delivered better performance for gaming than the Mobius, and I think that this is in large part due to the Penrose's tuning, which is actually quite different from that of the Mobius. So whilst the Mobius is a very warm sounding headphone, the Penrose instead has a counterclockwise tilt to its frequency response, so its tonality leans towards the brighter side, and I find that this makes for one of the better stock or default tunings I've heard for games like Call of Duty, PUBG, or CSGO. Whilst I usually associate Odyssey headphones with weighty and deep bass responses, the Penrose's bass region is surprisingly subdued, which I think is very helpful for keeping the bass from becoming distracting, and it helps in keeping the mix clean. It does have some slight swelling in the upper bass around 200 to 250 hertz, but it doesn't really feel all that intrusive, and I find that it just helps in giving the low end of sound cues like explosions and gunshots more presence. As for the mids, the Penrose has some interesting quirks as it moves into the upper mid range that I found helped in propelling sound cues like weapon reloads and footsteps to the forefront of the mix. To me, there seemed to be a noticeable emphasis at around 1k and around 3 to 4k, which really heightened the presence region's energy and put the upper mid range as the focus of the Penrose's frequency response. Lastly, there's the treble range, which, whilst mostly even, does have a pretty distinct boost at around 8k. This boost I think is great for FPS games because by highlighting the overtones and mid treble bite of the various game sounds, the Penrose really brings out the sound cues that are crucial for online competitive game players to detect. Okay, so now let's talk about soundstage and imaging. And unlike the Mobius, the Penrose is a strictly stereo headset with no DSP surround sound or 3D technology. Still, I found that it delivered decent performance for its spatial qualities. The lack of 3D audio made the Penrose's soundstage feel drastically narrower and more intimate than that of the Mobius. However, when comparing both headsets in stereo mode, I felt as though, perhaps due to its afar, the Penrose felt just slightly less confined than the Mobius. Its imaging also seemed a tad bit cleaner and surprisingly precise for a closed back planar magnetic headphone. For its left right localization, I found the Penrose to perform better than other wireless gaming headsets like the Astro A50 and SteelSeries Arctis Pro, and better than some wired counterparts like the Hi-Fi Sundara or Sennheiser HC600 series headphones. So determining the location from which sound originated was very easy on the Penrose, and made them suitable for FPS games, where the directionality of sound plays an important part in the user's awareness. It's not as important for gaming, but I still thought it was worth mentioning that the Penrose does possess that planar magnetic advantage in instrument separation and layering, as it creates more image depth than what you find on dynamic driver headphones, especially those in this price bracket. Let's briefly talk about overall music listening performance for the Penrose. And when I reviewed the Mobius, one of the things I found ironic was that it didn't actually perform all that great for gaming, but it was outstanding for music listening, as it competed squarely both in tonality and technical performance with many of the high-end wired headphones in this price range. For technical performance, this remains true of the Penrose as well. It delivers a remarkably good sense of clarity and detail retrieval that matches that of the Mobius as well as of other headphones like the Hi-Fi Man Sundara, which I think is pretty impressive given that it's a wireless headset. As I mentioned earlier, uh, its soundstage 
despite not conveying the greatest sense of distance, does have precise imaging as well as very good depth and image distinction. Additionally, the Penrose and the Mobius both have good dynamics, which add a nice sense of punch and slam in the lows and some tactility up top to keep the music listening experience engaging. Now, there are two different aspects of the Penrose that I think could use some improvement for music listening, and the first one is actually in its tonality. I love the Penrose's tuning for gaming, and it's still good for music, but it does have some unevenness throughout the range, particularly in the mid and treble regions. Looking again at the mid-range, when listening to music, it comes across for me as being maybe a bit too forward as a result of the 3 to 4K emphasis in the presence region, and it did tend to make vocals as well as instruments like electric guitars just a bit harsh or shouty. Then there's also the 1K rise I mentioned earlier, which although fairly subtle, does have a slight impact on the Penrose's timbre, making it sound a little boxy or nasally. Moving on to the treble range again, there is the boosted AK region, which places a stress on consonant sounds and results in some mid-treble sibilance, which could be slightly fatiguing in longer music listening sessions. Of course, this can be adjusted via EQ, which is available on the Odyssey HQ software, but for those who aren't comfortable with making their own EQ profiles, I thought it was worth mentioning. The second thing I wanted to mention was the Penrose's white noise. This was something that really bothered me on the Mobius, and the background hiss on the Penrose is actually a bit more present. And I found this to be really distracting when listening to music with quiet passages, so for example, uh, solo piano performances or solo classical guitar performances, or even when I was just talking to my friends on Discord. So I don't know if it's possible, but I'd really like to see these remedied uh, in the future via maybe a firmware update. One very quick thing I wanted to mention before wrapping up the video is that I made an Odyssey HQ EQ profile for the Mobius, and it'll be detailed in the description down below. So if you want to try it out, it's right there. Okay, so what are my final thoughts? Well, I think that the Penrose is a truly outstanding gaming headset. In its features and tuning, I feel as though Odyssey has done a very good job at reworking the already good headset that they had in the Mobius and further optimizing it for gaming. Now, I know that $300 may seem like a big ask for a gaming headset, but honestly, in terms of sound quality, the Penrose is leaps and bounds ahead of any of the other wireless headsets I've heard from, you know, Astro, SteelSeries, HyperX, uh, as well as, you know, Turtle Beach. And it also has the great multimedia functions that the Mobius still has. So it has very good multi-platform support, although you do have to get the proprietary Xbox or PlayStation version, depending on your console. And it still has the solid technical performance. And with just a touch of EQ, you can get a really good tonality out of them, which then makes them also probably alongside the Mobius, the best uh, wireless high-end audio headphone I've heard. I just hope that in the future, Odyssey is able to fix that uh, white noise background issue as that can be a bit irritating. Where does this leave the Mobius? Well, at least for me personally, the Penrose is every bit as good in its performance as the Mobius. And as someone who's enthusiastic about using EQ, the Penrose's tonality was not really a big concern. Additionally, with the Penrose, you get the option of gaming wirelessly with no perceivable latency, and slightly better comfort thanks to the reduced weight and softer clamp force. The only reasons I can think of for going to the Mobius over the Penrose are if you don't like using EQ, as the Mobius has multiple good EQ profiles built in. Uh, also, if you want 3D audio for more immersive open world and movie watching experiences, or if you really can't stand the more gamer aesthetic that comes with the Penrose. Either way, I don't think that you can really go wrong, as these are both amazing headsets, and I look forward to checking out what future wireless goodness Odyssey has cooking up. Anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do consider dropping a like. If you want to learn more about the Penrose or other headphones, I highly encourage you to check out the review section available on headphones.com. For more headphone audio content, stay tuned by subscribing to The Headphone Show, and until next time, this is Chrono signing off.